not doing an organic content strategy on LinkedIn, you're messing up big time. You could spend your whole life, 100% of your energy, people pleasing and trying to get everyone to like you and people will still hate you. So why not just be yourself anyways? Everyone here is educated. Everyone here is trying to better themselves. It's almost just like a Facebook for entrepreneurs. Oh, just I love to... that, I love that. And uh, another good way that you can up your open rate is... Welcome to another episode of the Dan Lok Show. You know how the show works. I bring you the best of the best in the world. And today, like, I selfishly have been wanting to bring this guest on because I have a list of questions that I want to ask on how to do LinkedIn marketing. As you know, I have a pretty big social media presence, but when it comes to LinkedIn, it, it, it frustrates me. Right? I want to grow it, it's growing okay, but I think we can do a lot better. And today, this special guest, the queen, really the queen of LinkedIn, seriously. Someone who is not just for herself, but helped so many different brands, getting billions with a B, billions of views for the videos on LinkedIn. So Shay, welcome to the show. I'm so excited. I have so many questions. Now, question number one, what's one thing that people don't know about LinkedIn? Hey, well, first of all, thank you so much, Dan. Thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, you know, I would say one thing that people don't know about LinkedIn is simply that it is a gold mine of opportunity for business. I mean, I do think it kind of has that association with still being a resume platform and a job seeking platform mm -hmm. as opposed to a place to actually promote your business and your uh, B2B products and connect with high level industry professionals, that sort of thing. Um, so it's always a little heartbreaking to me when I go to these networking events and everyone's like, oh, I'm doing what I can to grow my Instagram. I'm putting money into Facebook ads. I'm doing all this, but they have the most perfect business product for LinkedIn. And I'm like, what are you doing with LinkedIn? They're like, LinkedIn? Oh, nothing. I haven't updated my profile in years. <laughs> so um, I would say the biggest misconception and, and what people don't see is that there's a huge opportunity on here to get leads organically. Mm. What, what do you see some of the mistakes that business owners make when it comes to LinkedIn? Now, I could see that sometimes a lot of them, they try to spam people without making the connections, just, just spamming with the same cookie cutter kind of template. That doesn't work. Uh, I could see that they don't post content, so that's not good. But what do you see when you work with clients? Like, what do you first help them do? Like, what are some of the steps? Yeah, I mean, actually, both of what you just brought up is really good points. I think pitching, you know, and asking uh, for things before you give is just a no-no on really all social media. But we do see a lot more pitching on LinkedIn. Um, I think in the past, direct messaging, your pitch on LinkedIn was more effective just because there was less competition here. It was less saturated. It was less of a place to go to consume free, valuable content mm -hmm. and more of a place to just go and direct pitch. But that's certainly changed. And there's definitely more of a stigma around that. So you're right on the money with that. Mm -hmm. You're right on the money with uh, people need content, you know, especially if you're doing direct outreach. I mean, it's one thing at this point for me to pitch, Shay Robottom, because I've built up a brand, I've built up a page on LinkedIn where I'm kind of synonymous with LinkedIn at this point. Right. So if people see a message from Shay Robottom in their inbox, how, how high of a percentage do you think that open rate is by now? Mm. Very high because they're like, wait a minute, I see this chick's content all the time. She's messaging me like this is dope. I have seen your content. Uh, before, oh, good. Way before, uh, way before. Really? Oh, yeah. good, good, good. What, what was your favorite thing? Well, it's, I forgot it's been like at least how many, how long ago? I well, all the, time. the reason, the reason I asked Dan is because one of my most viral videos ever was making fun of the sales guy persona. No, not that video. I haven't seen that. I was so no. I'll, I'll go Yeah, that one, that one you would love. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, I, I think the other and, big and I mistake, think also, I think what, yeah. um, what captivated my attention, because I think you started with before LinkedIn was more text-based. Yeah. I think when it comes to videos, I think that's what also with well, viral videos, like, yeah. that's how I caught my attention at least. Yeah, absolutely. And that was really my bread and butter here was there was very few people utilizing video as a tool to get attention. I mean, it came out as a feature 
uh, three years ago now, maybe. Yes. I mean, that's a very short period of time. When you look at how long LinkedIn has been around, it's, I mean, video has really only been a function very recently. So there's yeah. even today, not a lot of competition on video. And it's a great way to get people to see you as a relatable human being. I mean, you know this, Dan, people yes. do business with people that they know, like, and trust. Right. There's no quicker way in terms of content to get people to know, like, and trust you than when you yourself show up on video. Mm. Um, and so, you know, you asked about the mistakes business owners are making with content. I do think just uh, there's a great un misunderstanding still around how to get attention on social media, especially when we move into a space like LinkedIn, mm -hmm. where it's a lot of industries that aren't, that are a little more behind on social media marketing. You know, for example, if you take like the beauty industry or the cosmetics yes. industry, yes. they're crushing social media. There's not a salon or a place you could go to that doesn't understand like, oh, we post the before and after hair stuff. We do a time lapse of the makeover. We do like, you know, like that industry is kind of like hip and yes. into social media and utilizing it. On LinkedIn, you've got accountants, you got lawyers, <laughs> you know, you've got, um, um, uh, sales coaches, people, you know, it's just a little, they're a little slower to understand. A little dry, a little dry the topic also. Right. They're, they don't quite understand the logic behind content marketing and that it's all about giving and providing value and just getting people in the door, you know, uh, decorate your storefront to yes. create intrigue, to get people in the door. So, um, that's what I teach people. And, uh, also that, uh, this is a key one is, you know, uh, content is not ads. I see this on LinkedIn more than any other platform. People think that like a content strategy for their business is releasing an ad every day. Mm. Don't do that. <laughs> mm, that that's how, how you burn the relationship so quick. Uh, I want to get a little bit tactical. Let's say I have a very lousy LinkedIn presence, right? You what, do. What would be the I'm just kidding. First thing? <laughs> oh, it hurts me. It hurts. I, know, I, know, I know it's like it could be improved. <laughs> We are getting business from it, but uh, it's not supposed Oh, good, to. good. If you're already getting business from yes. it with, yeah. Yes. I mean, you so, are Dan so Locke. So what's the first thing that, thank you. What's the first thing we should fix? Is it the, the, the profile? Is it, the first, is it the title? Is it uh, recommendations? Like what, what's the first thing I got? Mm, yeah, that's a, that's a great question as well. I do think like even the stuff like the recommendations and the endorsements and that sort of stuff has also become less important as time goes on on LinkedIn. Because remember, this used to be a place that was primarily right. for job seekers and recruiters. And so it's you're static. It's very static. It's just mm -hmm. there, right? Yeah. So like your profile, it was very much like your resume and recommendations were super important and this and that. And they are important. But what I see for my clients who have the most success in terms of uh, conversions and optimizing their profile for conversions mm. is they just very clearly state what it is they do. You know, just very clearly, like a six-year-old can understand it. There's no reason you need to get all creative and, and complicated. And it's like, dude, your target market, they don't care about your MBA. They don't care about your Forbes 30 under 30. They actually don't care about that stuff that you think makes you look so cool mm -hmm. and authoritative. They just want to know upon landing on your LinkedIn profile right away upon getting there, mm -hmm. are, is this the person to solve my problem? Yeah, That's it. You know, that. so just clearly communicate who you're currently servicing and how you solve their problem. And of course, a very clear CTA of how they can get in touch with you. Um, I actually do have such a high traffic on LinkedIn. I have everyone messaging me on LinkedIn and I get all my leads inbound that way. But some people, especially smaller pages starting out, I'll just recommend they put their phone number on there or put an email on there because LinkedIn, well, I love it. And I've got many good things to say about it. The messenger platform is not all that built out and there's some issues on the back end. Things can glitch out on this platform. So keep in mind, it can also be a strategic play to just have another option for where people can contact you mm. on your LinkedIn profile. That's yeah. not on LinkedIn, like your email or your website, et cetera. Yes. Because for them to, maybe they want to uh, opt in to get something for free or they want to pick up the phone and just call you directly versus right. I got to connect with you. I got to, you know, have uh, messages on right. LinkedIn. And then here's how we get on the phone, this back and forth. It creates so many layers, right? So many right. Layers. And that's actually another good point that you bring up, a lead magnet. Uh, yes. I, I've seen a lot of my clients have success. We make them a lead magnet. We put it in their summary, you know, a little bit about what they do, how they can help you. And then at the end, you know, for more information here, download this free PDF on uh, our services. And then at the end of the PDF, it's like kind of a lead magnet to get them into some sort of funnel. Um, so that works really well as well. If you have any sort of giveaway and it's already made, go put it in your LinkedIn summary right now. And if we were to get into some details when it comes to like LinkedIn content, 
because you're so good at it. Uh, how many videos should I do? How long should those videos be? And like, how do I research the titles? What, like, what are some of the, the details? I yeah, no, great, great questions. Um, <laughs> you've got plenty of videos, Dan. You, for someone like you, you just hire someone like me and I plug and play all your content for you. But for somebody who's new to video, who maybe doesn't actually have any video content around their business yet, and they know they need social media, they know this is the place to be is on LinkedIn, their market's on LinkedIn, but they just don't even know how to start. Yes. I recommend not being hard on yourself. That's like a big thing I coach people yes. on because what I notice is the more rules that we create for ourselves, the longer it actually takes to just execute, right? I'm all about executing, don't complicate it. So if you think, oh, I can't start video until I have a videographer, until I have an editor, until I have, I have lights a and a fancy, I yeah, all... uh, until I have a Dan Lock studio, right? You're gonna be waiting a long time in your perfectionist mindset before you actually just start, you know? It's selfie, I don't care, selfie. Exactly, and that's it. I started on my cell phone. I had a very simple goal starting out. When I got on the platform, in May of 2018, I said this, look, I'm gonna commit to three original selfie videos per week shot on my cell phone. I'm gonna keep them all to uh, two minutes or less. Actually, I think most of them were like 90 seconds or less. Oh, okay. um, yeah, Is that the best uh, time frame? The shorter the video, the more new eyeballs on your page. So think okay. about it like this, Dan. Okay. A stranger is very um, weary to invest their precious time into unknown content from a creator they don't know know like and trust yet Makes sense. Makes sense. so you know these people on social media it's become very competitive like every, you're competing with everyone else in the news feed if you show up in the news feed and someone sees your content they don't know you and it's six minutes long they're very likely to go i'm not going to risk six and investing six minutes into this shea woman who even is this you know but they might take a video that's 60 seconds and say, right. oh, you know what? I could invest in 60 seconds and just check this chick out and see what she's about. So that's really what I recommend for new creators is like, you know what, keep it short. And then once you actually have the following, you have the loyal tribe, you have people who've seen enough of your content that they know your value, they trust you, by all means, release long form content. I mean, look at, that's why you've got a podcast right now, right? I mean, people yeah. trust you enough to listen to a podcast. So I do release longer videos now, but I also do it with the understanding of, I have enough followers who trust me, who are going to watch that video all the way to the end. She, as far as- a good uh, numbers of followers before I even consider doing like long form content? Mm. Like, do I need how many? Like, what's a what's a what's a good number? That's a good question. I don't think I can give an exact number. I mean, followers I do think matter, but engagement is really more important. How Got engaged it. is your following, and what what are you going to do a long form video about? You know, like for me, if I want to do a long form video about, um, yeah, you know, my experience moving to Miami mm. two years ago, like that might do okay. Some people might be a little more interested in my personal life. Like, yeah, I'll check out this long form video of Shay's journey. Cool. But if I do a 10 minute video or a longer form piece of content, that's like, here's all my, you know, top hacks for LinkedIn. Tune in now, watch yeah, till the end for the good. number one hack. I mean, people that are following me are highly engaged for that content. Mm -hmm. So actually it depends on the long form content, whatever your audience is most craving, whatever they're asking for consistently. And you'll start to pick this up as you grow your page. Oh, this is what people want. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So I know that a lot of people follow me for my LinkedIn marketing skills. Yes. I know by now that with how engaged that community is, mm -hmm. they're going to stick around for a longer form video if it is on that content. Got it. So 90 second, two minute video. And in terms of the frequency, how those three times a week, yes. that's a good. Well, yeah. So that, that was my goal starting out. I said, I'm just going to do three posts a week. I did Monday, right. Wednesday, Friday. I do recommend you test, you know, different time slots and but um, people usually use weekdays, right? Exactly. Yeah. The weekends on LinkedIn are a little slow, but the, the it's, it's, it goes both ways on LinkedIn, actually. Like the weekends are slow on LinkedIn, but it's also a good opportunity on LinkedIn because there's less competition on the weekends on right. LinkedIn. Right. So your post, I've actually had a few things go viral. Actually, we, we've had a lot of things go viral on weekends. Yeah. Cause there's less people posting, but, um, so, so what's the secret of going viral? You gotta you give me, Oh one, gosh. One big, big oh, it's gotta be so, mind blowing. So here's the thing about viral content, Dan yeah. is, so Gary V has a quote where he talks about viral content. This is actually, I agree with Gary all the time. This is one area where I actually challenge him a little um, because he says, 
you can't plan to go viral, right? He says the whole point of viral content and viral content in its nature is it's viral and uncontrollable. Like it just, it pops off and out of nowhere, this boom, works. you've got a viral hit, right? And I understand that that does happen. Mm -hmm. I've worked with viral videos for a long time. This is actually how I learned video marketing was I had an agency on Facebook that licensed video clips for large pages on Facebook. And I made a lot of things go viral. That's actually, you were mentioning in the beginning, the billions and billions of views. Mm -hmm. That was on Facebook. That was actually before my time on LinkedIn. Um, the, yeah, the views aren't quite as high on LinkedIn yet. Mm -hmm. But see, from my perspective, working on Facebook all those years with all those different content creators, licensing thousands of clips. I mean, we were doing a billion views a month. We, we had so much data on what was going viral, what it was about, what the audience was, what time it was patterns, posted. Right? Yeah, exactly. So we had so much data amassed that I was able to kind of reverse engineer a lot of the things I saw go viral on Facebook for my own brand on LinkedIn. Yeah. And this is where, where I challenge Gary to say like, you can't plan to go viral, bullshit. I planned to go viral in a video about Gary Vee where I was just making fun of him the whole time. I was imitating, I was doing all his like classic lines, like college is bullshit. And like, you know, just, uh, give I was me like, of those. Give, me, gotta give me a couple of those. Oh God, come what on, did I on, say? Like, um, your parents, who cares about your parents? You know, <laughs> who cares what your friends think? If you want to yeah. go out and drink beer, go out and drink beer, but then don't complain. Don't complain about your life. You know, just, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> just all so that good. stuff. So yeah. I, so, so it's twofold. Okay. I knew that skit content, these funny spoof style, like, you know, scripted videos, I knew that they were going viral on Facebook, started out on YouTube years prior. Like everyone on social media likes that skit yes. format where someone is making fun of something relatable and we all get a good laugh. Yes. So I decided, you know what? I, I, I'm an actress, you know, I, I, have, I have a performing background. I can act. I was like, mm. you know what? Why don't I make skits? for LinkedIn because nobody was doing it. I was like, I could take this formula of this style of content and bring it to LinkedIn and just talk about like office life, right? And that was the birth Business actually of that, of that sales video where I was making fun of sales guys. And I made one about Gary V and I planned for it to go viral. So what I did was I, imitated him i did all his top lines i like dressed like him i had the airpods in oh, you know i was i was even the, in, the, the, the head i actually i actually i actually didn't wear a hat oh, no. that, darn that it be, next the follow-up one we'll do a follow-up no, one right. but at the end of the video i i had a cta a call to action slide that says um tag gary below so that he can see this so i got like thousands of people tagging him in my video on LinkedIn, which was already going viral because I knew it would because it was a skit and it's funny and it's relatable and no one's doing this. Yeah. But it got so many tags for Gary, he saw it. And yes. guess what? He commented and guess what? He's got a much larger page than mine yes. on LinkedIn. Yeah. So when a big page comments on a smaller page, they can really help propel that smaller page forward. And that's what he did. He commented on my post. I think I gained like 7,000 followers just from that one video alone. So um, I would say it's not always foolproof, but based on the experience on social media and the data that I have amassed throughout the years, I would absolutely say, yes, you can plan to go viral or at least prepare for it, but you got to just reverse engineer what you already see working online and not try to be all in your ego, like hundred percent original. It's got to come from me. It's like, no, just, just find what's working and go and remix it and reformat it for yourself. That's actually for your very brand. profound because I think people think, oh, those type of funny humorous videos, ah, YouTube is okay, Facebook is okay, but LinkedIn, oh, LinkedIn, we gotta be all professional and right. serious and boring. And when you, I think it's the opposite. When you bring some of those elements into a very business-ish kind of uh, platform, you stand out because everyone is so boring. Yes. Everyone is like, so just like that. Yeah. You, you hit the nail, you hit the, you Perfect. hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're doing this interview for me. You're saying things that I say all the time. I mean, <laughs> it is, it is boring. Everyone on LinkedIn trying to be it's more professional. Yeah. The and they're all trying to like gain business by looking like they have no flaws yeah. by looking like they have it all together, you know, yeah. only sharing the glamour only sharing the highlights of their business, the successes. You know, um, I always encourage my clients, you know, share the failure, mm -hmm. share the downfall. What, what happened? Did you, did you get fired once and lose your job and how heartbreaking, you know, you know business she, partner or the issues or yeah, issues, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there's just a big misconception still 
in business and in the world in general. And this is like shifting with the whole mental health movement. People are finally realizing like, we should really like get in touch with our emotions as humans and stop projecting onto the world and like, just, just heal, just become a little bit more adult. And it's, it's what it is. People are starting to feel safe being vulnerable, even in business. Yes. And what, what do you think of in terms of like articles or, or written form kind of content? Do I combine the two? So let's say I'm doing three videos, short, good, creative videos mm-hmm. three times a week. What about in terms of text? Do I, yeah. do I space them out? Do I release the same day? What should I do? Oh, yeah, that's a great, uh, great point. A couple different things in there. Um, I would encourage you if you're a new creator starting out on LinkedIn to not post on top of one another. Like if you just posted, don't post again for a couple more hours because what that does is it dilutes the views from the first post and it just kind of splits. the momentum, right? Yeah, it kind of, yeah, exactly. It kills the momentum from the yeah. previous post. I mean, you can do it once you're bigger and have more traction on your page, but in the beginning, it can, I tell people a lot, like they think they need like so many pieces of content starting out. I'm like, it's actually like kind of in vain. Like it can be like counterproductive. You just need to post consistently, but you should have spacing between your posts on LinkedIn to let it ride as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, But in terms of articles, you know, this is another feature that used to be huge on LinkedIn, kind of died, not as common. They can do well. I myself have had articles that have been really successful, but um, they, they don't stand out in the feed anymore. I mean, go in your LinkedIn newsfeed. How often I, I do you feel like now when I go into LinkedIn, it's more Facebook ish. I think that's the best way to yes. describe it. They, they try to, I guess, learn and mimic mm-hmm. a little bit of what Facebook is doing, right? It's more right. video. The, more I will, I will say, I will say, Dan, the narcissist in me likes to think that was my doing. <laughs> cause I know seriously, you cause helped. I came, well, cause I came from Facebook and I, I kind of was one of the first video creators on LinkedIn. I kind of brought that Facebook video marketing logic to okay. LinkedIn. So, so, and so a, deep down, you're like, finally, you guys got it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is like, you know, I think it's exciting. I think it's almost kind of like, yeah, you're right. Becoming like a Facebook, but more conscious. I always joke that LinkedIn is the most spiritual platform, right? Mm. Everyone here is educated. Everyone here is trying to better themselves. Everyone here is into personal development content, you know? So, um, it's almost just like a Facebook for entrepreneurs where people are starting to go. Oh, I love that. I love that. Say that again. It's exactly. It's a Facebook for entrepreneurs. For entrepreneurs. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Exactly. Mm. That's a, that's a great, great way to describe it. So let's say I'm uploading, I'm getting some more followers. It's, it's good. It's building up. Then how do I convert that into leads? Like what would be the next step? Do I just message them and say, Hey, you want to buy my stuff? <laughs> like, what, what yeah. Yeah. I you do? can, you can do that. Um, so I am very much a believer in the jab, jab hook. Like yes. I really don't pitch a lot in my content, yes. but what I do do in my content is I'm constantly reminding people of my value. I'm constantly positioning myself as an authority in my industry. Mm -hmm. Um, So even though, like I said, I'll talk about my personal life, I'll talk about just general business tips, I'll talk about the failures that I've been through because that uh, gets people to relate to me on a more human level. Mm -hmm. I'm also constantly giving free advice about video marketing, free advice about how to grow on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And the best lead is one that comes to you right? Yes. So the mo- exactly. Yeah. So the more that I can just show up consistently, give, give, give in all my video content, I'm just giving away free tips, free tips, LinkedIn marketing. I do LinkedIn marketing every once in a while. I'll share like a, you know, a testimonial success story of someone I worked with and I got them clients on LinkedIn. And what happens inevitably is people see me so many times. They're like, okay, what is this woman up to? I got to reach out to her. She's never asked me for anything. She's mm-hmm. providing free value to me all the time. I, I trust this woman now. I have a lot of respect for her. So I'm going to reach out to her. So this is the formula that I teach is, you know, how can you get inbound leads on your profile? Cause they're easier to convert, mm-hmm. but you brought up a good point about the outbound, which is also important. And if you are looking to do outbound direct messaging, I strongly encourage you to focus more first on forming relationships with people yeah. rather than just pitching, yeah. giving them something. Don't yeah. just pitch. And uh, another good way that you can um, up your open rate is 
by messaging people who recently engaged with your content. content yeah, of course. yeah. So this is why I always say the two go hand in hand. Like yes. some people are like, no, I just want to do cold outreach. I'm like, yeah, but the, the content, it supports it so much. Yeah. So, um, you could reach out, you know, say, Hey, Hey, Hey John, I saw that you, um, just commented on my recent video. Um, I do help people with uh, LinkedIn video here. If you ever need help, let me know. And another thing, you know, if you see people who need help and you can see directly on their page, like um, uh, me, for example, I'm a LinkedIn marketer, so I can go to someone's page, check out their content and automatically see, oh, they're not doing this right. Oh, they don't have good headlines. Oh, their videos are too long. Oh, this and that. Then I'll just message them with all of that feedback, you know? Hey, John Smith, just wanted to give you a heads up. I was looking at your videos, really great job. Love that you're getting on camera, but just so you know, um, here's X, Y, and Z tips to optimize your posts and make you reach more people. And that's all I say. I don't even say anything. And then they reply like, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You just provided me so much free value. I got to know more. And then I'll move more into a pitch, but they're asking for it. You know, like you will really... I don't, I don't ever feel like I'm pitching, right? I don't ever feel like I pitched because I'm always just educating people and then they ask me, can I hire you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's education-based marketing, right? It has so Thank much you, value yes. And being helpful and they, they cannot help but say, hey, do you have more? Do you, do you, do you work with clients? Right. Do you have a program? Like what, what more resources do you have? It's a it's very organic conversation, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, so now we are connecting with people. What about back in a few years, do we have the LinkedIn kind of verified, right? No yes. And I try to get it. And it seems like now it's, that program is not active, only the ones we had had before. So how can I build more authority for my LinkedIn if it was not verified? Like what else I can do? Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny you bring up the, the verified. I was actually going to mention that when you mentioned articles because LinkedIn, they do actually still want to push articles or they did. And the, the influencer badge that you saw in profiles, yes. people were only eligible for that who wrote at least one new original article per week on LinkedIn natively. Mm -hmm. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Maybe that's yeah. why you never got approved. I don't know if you, you weren't writing enough articles. Um, Done on the list. Right. But it's, it's, it's hilarious you say that because uh, all, all these people are, are so butthurt about the button. Like Grant Cardone, when yes. I interviewed him, he said yeah. the same thing. He's like, they never gave me the LinkedIn button. What's up with that, Shay? I'm just like, ah. So, but you know, um, um, it helps. It helps to be verified on any platform, but I would say the best way to build your authority is just show up consistently, you know, remind people I'm here, you know, I'm not going to let you guys, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. Um, and people will start to see your value. And also for you, um, it's very easy. It's very easy because you do already I have that authority. Purpose, uh, content from other platforms on LinkedIn, or do I need some original content to make a video just for LinkedIn? Yeah, great question. So that's actually exactly what I do. I was, I was telling you before the call, you know, we'll go through influencers content on other platforms and we have a team of people that's trained to know what will perform better on LinkedIn. Mm. Um, but for someone like you, I would say it's probably a lot because like your whole brand is business already. You know, it's, uh, it's not like you're selling consumer products. It's not like we got to get super creative. To, how do oh, we I might pivot? be launching a makeup line. You never know. Are you? Oh <laughs> yeah. Because we could do so much fun some content lipsticks. around that. I no, that's what I, move, you know? I, I, I think, I think you <laughs> should. <Yeah, my> cosmetics. <laughs> I think so. Uh, like makeup for men, makeup for men. That would be so fun for me to market. Oh, my yes. Goodness. Yes. So, so uh, now, now for professionals who are like, you see a lot of professionals, they're like camera shy. Like they're like, oh, I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm not comfortable. I don't know what to say. And, and I see a lot of hesitation, resistance when it comes to creating that. I've been telling them, you got to do video content. You got to do video content, but there's still a lot of resistance. Uh, for someone like that, uh, what are some of the ways you can help them to come up with content, right? They might mm. be, well, let's say I'm, a, I'm an accountant. Well, I can only talk about bookkeeping credit debit so much how do i come up with yeah interesting content that doesn't bore people to death right like what are some right that? yeah no that's a great question um i will say this is actually the biggest thing i coach people on mm -hmm. is that confidence getting on camera yeah. right they they think that they're hiring me to teach them about linkedin marketing yeah. but they're actually hiring me to give them confidence yes also people with, are, with your background with in acting, the same thing. It's yeah. a lot of you bring it to the camera, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've always naturally been really good on camera. I've always naturally liked 
public speaking. I know for a lot of people, it's the opposite. It's like their biggest fear. Um, so I'm very blessed in that way. But I got to say, being in the position to work with so many others, I, I've seen the other side of like, oh, wow, people are really afraid of this. You know, and yes. people are really afraid of how they're going to look, what their friends are going to think, what their family or their partners are going to think. And um, there's just so much imposter syndrome too. Like, well, I don't even really know if I have anything good to talk about. And I'll be like, Bob, you've been in your industry for 25 years. Like, what do you mean you don't have things to talk about? Oh, no one would want to learn that. No one would be interested in, in them talking they, about something. They things. do though. They do. This is what I always tell people. Look, like just frame, if nothing else, frame all of your content around this. What do I know that would make my target market's lives easier Bingo. that they don't know? Yes. That's it. And just free tips, free tips, free tips. Um, I would also encourage them to share some personal stuff. You know, this, mm. this video course, it can be very healing for people. It can really, I've seen a lot of people buy my program thinking, oh, I just want leads. You know, I'm just here for the ROI. It's just strictly marketing, strictly marketing. But throughout the program, I can tell it's like, dude, you want to be an influencer. Like you want to be a personal brand. You just don't want to admit it because maybe you feel like that's shameful or you shouldn't. And then throughout the course of working with me, I see them like create this gimmick and this brand and a brand anchor. And like they'll, they themselves will like kind of just almost like get in touch with their inner child more and get more creative and have more fun. And like that is what attracts business. That is what attracts eyeballs to your page. People are like, who is that woman? Like, I want to work with her. I got to know more about her business. So I would say for somebody starting out wondering, you know, how do I come up with ideas? Don't overthink it. You know, people are drawn to authenticity, especially in this great awakening of 2020. People want to just follow people who tell the truth, who are real. So another thing I experienced, Dan, is, you know, I'll get on the phone with clients and they'll say, I don't have any content ideas. I don't know what to talk about. And I'll say, okay, let's forget content for a second. Then just tell me what's been going on. Tell me about your life. And they'll say like, oh, well, you know, we got to move office buildings. Uh, we just hired a new assistant. Oh, I got to take my kid to college this year. I got to do this. And I'm like, okay, why not just talk about any of that? what you just shared with me, like that's all relevant content. They're like, oh, no way. You know, it's almost like people think they need to go put this like content hat on. It's right. gotta be all like over here. It's separate than over here. It's like, dude, it's just your life. Like just yeah. document your life. And that's what really draws people to you. Cause you're not only sharing valuable tips around your industry that positions you as an expert, as an authority, but you're also reminding people, Hey, I'm safe. I'm human. I have normal, relatable experiences too. Like I got to get my kid to college this year and how, how crazy of an experience that has been. How many hardworking parents can relate to that story on LinkedIn and are going to reach out to you way quicker than they ever would if you would have just only ever talked about accounting and what you need to do in your accounting. Mm, that makes sense. Now, when it comes to YouTube, titles are very critical. What about yes. LinkedIn? How important is a title? Do I need to do any kind of research? to come up with the proper title before I, I create the content itself? So articles, remember we were talking about how articles yes. used to be like huge on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's this um, element of LinkedIn content, even video still, okay. where the text, the copy, the text description associated with your video post or your picture post or whatever is so important on LinkedIn because remember, for so long, this platform didn't have video as a function. Correct. So people's eyeballs on LinkedIn, especially still go to the text. 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 Yeah. The text first, like, yeah. so those first three lines before you see that see more button on LinkedIn posts, those first three lines of your text copy are so important. And I do highly recommend you sit and, and take a moment to come up with a compelling headline, something relevant to the topic at hand. Mm -hmm. um, and even like, I've even repeated headlines on different videos. Like it's a completely different video, but it's around a similar topic enough that I've taken that same text headline that I know is a banger and I'll reuse it. So I would say headlines are important on any social media platform, no matter what, there's different forms of headlines. You can have a headline, for example, on, on a, edited as a bar on the top of your video, which I know many people are doing now. You can have the first line of your video. This, the first spoken line is, is a headline, should be considered a headline. Uh, but especially on LinkedIn, I do want to press the importance of the copy headline because it's just what this platform used to be was text only. So that's still where a lot of viewers' eyes go. What about Sales Navigator? I think one of the things that we do do well because I run the, the sales team to be able to utilize Sales Navigator to, to generate leads. I think that yes. we're doing well, but I think a lot of business owners, they still they're not quite sure how that mm -hmm. works. How does the outbound integrate with maybe my inbound and, and content marketing? 
Right, right. So Sales Navigator is an awesome tool. I mean, especially if you're going to do outbound on LinkedIn, looking for your target market. I've had many contacts on LinkedIn that have a lot of success with it. Yes. Um, I myself don't personally use it. It's my sales team on it. So I, I actually don't personally know the technical mechanics mm -hmm. of Sales Navigator too well. Um, but I will say that I've seen a lot of people have a lot of success with that. And it just goes back to what I said, you know, the more you have content to share, the better your outreach, whether you're using sales navigator as a tool or not. And also keep this in mind, you know, if you start making videos around your industry with valuable topics, things that you know will make your target markets lives easier, right? Mm -hmm. You can actually utilize that in your direct outreach, almost like a lead magnet or a way to just give without asking. So when you contact people through the platform, you can say, hey, and you already know they're your target market. You already scan their profile a little and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, this person would be a good fit for my services. You could actually direct message them with a link to an organic video that you posted on LinkedIn that's mm. sharing free tips that's going to make their life easier. Yeah. So that's another great way to increase your open rate. That's a great tip because then they're still staying on the platform and you're not taking them to go to someplace else, right? Right, YouTube right, exactly. Website. Sometimes you want to do that, but mm -hmm. I like how it's staying within the platform. That, that makes yes. sense as well. Right. Uh, do you see that uh, LinkedIn, are there any tips on how to get people to share your content a little bit more? Assuming the content is good, uh, is it maybe a call to action within the video? Because Facebook used to do that, right? You know, Facebook videos, by the end of the videos, hey, share with a friend with like- Right, uh, right. Do you do that on, on LinkedIn? I do, yes. I definitely recommend CTAs. I am a big believer in you don't ask, you don't get, right? Mm -hmm. So just ask, you know, just ask, hey, if this video made you laugh, please share it. Um, you can even message people like- if you start to accumulate fans, which I did very quickly when I started on LinkedIn, I would use those fans to my advantage. You know, I knew I was on the track of growth. You know, I knew I was going to get so big to the point where at one point I wouldn't be able to more intimately engage with my fans as I was in the beginning. So I took advantage of that time. I said, look, I have the privilege right now of having enough time to invest in all, you know, a uh, hundred of my super fans right now who are gung ho Shay and who are messaging me that they come to my page every morning for my new videos. I mean, those are real fans and I actually have time to engage with all of them. I would make them work for me. I would message them. Hey, I just put out a new video. Can you share with your following now? Or can you go comment on this right away to help boost it in the algorithm? I mean, that was huge. I, I truly attribute a lot of my success to just asking. I was hustling in the beginning. I knew every follower counts. You know, I didn't get greedy. Um, and, and I still do everything that I can. I mean, I don't have as much time now, but I do everything I can to um, show my fans that I am a real person who appreciates them and is here for them. And then one more tip I will say around that, Dan, it's small things like this, but I, I kid you not, I've probably sent this message mm. thousands of times to fans, thousands of times. Any message you get on LinkedIn that's not a lead, let's say you don't get a lead where you're like, oh, they're clearly interested in my services. Let's, let's go into the funnel and blah, blah, blah. But they're just complimenting you. They're just saying, hey, I noticed I you started making, it. yeah, I noticed you started making videos. I love your videos. Thank you so much. They're great. Mm -hmm. Don't let a compliment in your LinkedIn inbox go to waste. So this is what I do. Mm -hmm. I'll message, yeah, I'll message back and I'll say, thank you so much for the support. It means the world to me. Hey, if you know of anyone else who would find value in my content, please send them a link to my page. That's it. That's it. I have sent that message to thousands of people and I have never once got a response. That's like, oh, I can't believe you're asking me this. You know, like it's, it's all, I mean, I'm not, it, does everyone do it? Maybe not, but it's always a response. Like, of course I will. And yeah. And so it's word of mouth. It's word of mouth. And that's what I mean when I say, make your followers work for you. And what's your process like now with like, do you have a team, you make the video, they upload it? Because for someone, let's say it's busy, maybe they don't have time to do all that. What, like, what, what's your process like? Sure, yeah. So I will say I'm moving, I'm, I'm moving uh, away from working so much in my business right now so that I do have more time to start making more original scripted content again. But the natural progression for me was like, I had time to make original videos, scripted content, post, kind of grow my own page. Okay, I got busier and busier. I started a new company, got busier, started outsourcing everything, started having other people run my page. At, at, a, at a certain point, I had so many people that wanted to interview me 
about LinkedIn? Can you get on my podcast? Can you get on my show? Can you do this live speaking event? Da, 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 that I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to take a break from putting my energy into original content for a while. And I'm just going to do documentation style. Mm -hmm. So for example, this show, even like yeah. my team would go through this show, pick out some fire micro clips anywhere. I'm dropping value. That's like 60 yeah. seconds, make a clip out of it and put it on my page for me. So yeah, I do think that's the natural progression for a lot of influencers that become public figures is yeah. you just, you just work off PR. Um, but I am an artist at my core. I mean, I love public speaking and I love being of service to others, but I do, I do really love the creative process. So that's what my team and I are up to right now is, um, I'm just hiring, working out some things so that I'm delegating a little bit more and have more time to go back into original production, which I'm super excited for. And it doesn't have to be all the time. Maybe it's less frequency. Maybe I mean to have that, I mean, one, one video a month or even one video a week. That's, you know, you write the script, you brainstorm, you storyboard it, and boom, you, you, you make that, right? Yeah, exactly. That. It's interesting, Shay, you brought it up because some people ask me about like how I make my videos go viral on YouTube and why our YouTube channel grew, right? Now we are at 3 million sub, uh, subscribers on YouTube. Oh, wow. Congrats. Right? Um, yeah. And so I say, because I've always had a passion kind of in, in like yourself, I've had a passion in like movie and stuff like that. So I incorporate a lot of those elements, which by the way, all the YouTube consultants, all the experts say, no, don't do that. I'm like, that. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to really, do, yeah. What do they say? Not, what do they say not to do specifically? Okay. So, so I, first of all, uh, when I had, I think maybe not even a hundred thousand, uh, followers on the subscribers on YouTube. And I said, you know, I want to make, cause all my, all my videos, it's about entrepreneurship, sales, marketing, business, right? Right. I, I want to change it up a bit. I'm going to make some uh, videos on martial art. Cause that's oh, I love passions. that. Right, because I'm a, I'm a I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan. I've actually studied under two of Bruce Lee's original students. Right, so I brought wow. all those elements into the into the channel, and all the YouTube consultants said, "No, no, no! It would it would confuse the algorithm. Uh, your audience would be confused because they subscribe your channel for business content. Suddenly, you're talking martial art. No, no, no! It's no, no. You don't do that. Yep. Uh, it's just a big, absolutely no. I did it. Took my channel to a whole new level. Ah, uh, see? It's a whole new level. And then it's, oh, then I brought my wife, Jenny, into the mix. She talks a little bit about shopping and unboxing stuff. And then I brought in stuff like, you know, little things like that. Uh, my, uh, my, my, my love for superheroes and Iron Man and all this stuff. And it just grew and grew because people could see, oh, I'm not just a, a I have one hat, the CEO hat, but also have, like you said, maybe the inner child, maybe the other yep. aspect, a martial artist, a, a teacher. So, I think that makes the character, I guess, more interesting, right? Yes. And I'm so happy you shared your experience on YouTube because that is precisely what I'm talking about with this old school branding mentality of like, it's, it doesn't match the brand. It's, it's too personal. It's too vulnerable. We're going to turn people off. It's like, it's bullshit. It's total bullshit. I mean, you said it yourself, as soon as you started to share more of your human elements, get a little more personal, more vulnerable, even bringing in your family, the wife. I mean, that's amazing. Like people are able to relate to you on a whole new level that way. And this is exactly what I teach on LinkedIn. Like, look, do whatever your comfort level is. I'm not telling anyone to do anything they don't want to do or don't feel comfortable sharing, but like there is a huge difference that occurs when you grow a brand and you're willing to also share the personal side of yourself. I do not think, I know for certain, I would not have grown in popularity and follower count and revenue even and everything that I've done the past couple of years on LinkedIn yeah. if I if I only ever talked about video marketing I don't I don't I think a yeah. huge part of it is because I've been vulnerable I've been honest I've shared my darkness I've shared my l losses I've Up shared my downs. yeah my past you know I've um I I just always come back to like if I feel it there's someone else out there who feels the same and maybe just maybe they're just waiting for someone to give them permission that it's okay to share and talk about it. And, um, that's, that's my motto. So and I can't I do martial arts though. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that won't be coming out in my videos anytime soon. It's, it, I think it's the, as a professional, people might think, Oh, but that might affect my credibility, right? That might, that people would think less of you. It's actually the opposite. It's it is. 
the it's totally the opposite. it's totally the opposite it's the totally opposite. the opposite and I, I, you you would think oh you know dan is always in suit if i when i did an unboxing video on like like as i collect those little iron man toys right it's oh that's silly that's like that's so you know that's like a child childish but it's awesome. It's, it's just do it. It's yeah. just what I collect, right? Some right. people like to collect what I collect toys. Right? right. And how many and how many people maybe reached out to you for business, bought one of your courses who never would have until Correct. they saw that post because they're like, oh, I collect these too. And now Correct. I can, and wait, wait a minute, like, who is this guy? You know, that's yeah. the way I see it is people are like, uh, you know, she's, she's talking about these things that I'm interested in, you know, what else does she do? And then they kind of click back to my profile and they're like, Oh, wait a minute. She's a video marketer. Oh, you know what? I do need video marketing. And they kind of like talk themselves into it just because they like you. It's like, they want to be friends with you. They want to be part of the Shea tribe or the Dan tribe. Like they want to be in it. So give them an opportunity to be, to be in it. And here's another important element, Dan, around abundance and not having scarcity mindset is like also trusting the universe that you sharing more of your true self. Yeah. Even though it may actually turn some people off, mm -hmm. trusting the universe that those people aren't meant to work with you anyways. Yeah. And you're actually just having a scarcity mindset, trying to like collect all these clients who maybe aren't in your highest alignment and are, aren't going to, um, be on the same mission and same wavelength with you in the long run. So I always say that, you know, are there people I turn off? Of course, but I'm attracting clients who love me and, and are really easy to work with. And I think uh, I tell all my, all my, all my fans, last thing you want is you, you become very successful, but you don't like the person that you become. It's a facade. That is exhausting. I said, I, I love that you said that. Cause like, and I'm not like, I'm not like as well known as you yet, but you know, I'm starting to get a little, like there's been people who've recognized me in public and I'm like, okay, this is weird. Oh, and this, if, is, and, this is just getting started. See? Yeah. Right. It's just getting started. <laughs> um, just getting but started. Uh, right. Can't, can't go out of the house. Just no, no, wait, wait till you get recognized uh, in the bathroom. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. No, I, I've been, I've been recognized some places. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It was actually validating once I was meeting up with this guy to talk about going into business together and he had never met me. He didn't even really know that much about me. He wasn't um, really that starstruck, yes. but the guy at the table next to us, yeah. um, he was like, oh, I sat down at the lunch at the diner place and yeah. the guy at the table next, right away, he's like, oh, are you Shay? Are you Shay from LinkedIn? I was like, yes, I am. And then he's like, can I get your picture? And he was all, and, and then the guy that I was meeting, yeah, you know, was, was like nice all impressed. impressed. He was like, damn, like, who is this chick that I'm meeting yeah. for lunch? Like, Did so I get it could, <laughs> right, right. But, but it's so important what you said about putting on this facade and growing this following yeah. from yeah. a place that's not really real. It's not really who you are. And I do think that's the trap for a lot of people. And that's what like Hollywood has historically been forever. And influencers are disrupting that. Now influencers yeah. are like, I'm a, I'm a be real, you know, I'm a, I'm going to get a bunch of followers doing exactly what I'm doing and trust those people who are into that. Because I had a friend asking me the other day about getting famous and he, he's uh He's also a business owner, but he's not famous. He's not on social media or anything. He's a cool, cool guy. And he said, I would never want to be famous. I was like, really? Like, go into that. Why? He's like, because I just want to be able to be myself all the time. Uh, and I said, ah, well, do you, do you, right. Do you have a belief that fame is synonymous with having to be fake, having to put up a facade? And I, I challenged him. I said, look, this is my work. This is what I came here to do. As soon as I wake up in the morning and arrive at the day where I cannot be myself because of my own fame that I created, yes. I'm oh, done. You know, this is done. no longer worth it. You know, I truly pride myself on being myself and not letting the fame change me. And again, it just comes back to trust, trusting that the people who are going to follow me uh, that are meant to follow me will follow me. And the people that are meant to hear my message will hear my message. And yeah, not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to agree with you. Guess what? You could spend your whole life, a hundred percent of your energy, people pleasing and trying to get everyone to like you and people will still hate you. They so, still hate you. Yeah. So why not just be yourself anyways? It's also, I think why when you teach video marketing, I, I absolutely agree. It's very much a, trans, a personal transformation journey because by doing video, I found at least for myself, believe it or not, Shay, in the beginning when I did YouTube video, I had a two minute video, I would need to do 13 takes. Wow. That's how I started, right? Mm -hmm. I was, I, I need to script every word out because I was afraid I, I'm, I'm not gonna sound like when I, 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 know, I know what I'm talking about, I don't wanna stutter, all these things, 
right? And then from there, I, I build confidence. Like, hey, I could do this. I could, I could be able to, I could communicate my ideas and share my story. And after so many videos, the personal growth. Yes. Uh, yep. it's, it's not like that. It's, it's be, I think it's be yourself, but I do believe through social media done properly, you be your, become a better self. Yes. You up your game. You have to be more confident. You have to be more articulate. You have to be more thoughtful. And that's beautiful. I agree. I love that. And, and kudos to you, you know, cause you've come a long way. I certainly can't picture you like fumbling around with the camera oh, now and like, and being all nervous. <laughs> and I started off with a selfie video and then I got a little vlogging, like very low quality video to like a whole studio, the whole, whole setup and things like that. But it yep. wasn't, uh, I didn't get my first viral video on YouTube until my 900 somewhat videos. Wow. And what, what do you consider viral on YouTube? 1 million views. That's beautiful. Nine hundred, like people. Oh, your you, you, your channel is so big because it got viral. Uh, nine hundred somewhat videos, nothing until yep. I hit the nine hundred somewhat. Then I hit the first viral video, just the first one. Right. Yeah. I I actually for my first ten months growing my LinkedIn page, I had only one video, maybe two. Well, one or two videos that broke a hundred thousand views, which is go. like. Pr- practically kind of viral, million, yeah. kind of which is like million. practically viral on LinkedIn. Yeah. But when I hit the month 10, month 10, month 11 mark, I had, oh gosh, what was it? It was like four or five posts go viral in like, in like a matter of 60 days. Mm. And I've gone viral uh, uh, many times since. So, um, but you mentioned a, a good thing, which actually brought me back to something I was saying earlier that I may not have completed about the setup. Because remember I said in the beginning, I didn't make it hard on myself. It's actually social media. What's more important than having beautiful cinematic footage is actually just consistency. You know, like social media, people care about the context of the message, not how expensive your camera is. So this is why we see influencers all the time grow a following on their cell phone and no one cares. No one judges the production quality in that aspect. So make it easy on yourself. You know, whatever you can do to sustain do that. And then you can ramp up over time. Like Dan said, he eventually like got the hang of the videos the easy way. And then was like, you know what, now I'm going to get a tripod. Now I'm going to invest, you know, and take that, that money that you start getting from the LinkedIn leads through the video, start reinvesting that into a bigger setup. Mm -hmm. And if you go back in my LinkedIn journey, all the way in the beginning, I had very like unedited videos in the beginning. I I was never even like wearing makeup on my page. And I was sometimes just sometimes those videos do do better than the high production. Exactly. Like, and and they yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly, right? And that's what it is. People just want to see something real. They want to see something they can relate to. They humans want to feel normal. Mm. And so much of this culture of social media has made people feel very badly about themselves. Your body's not as hot as mine. You're not vacationing here. You don't have all these cars. You know, it's like when they see someone on social media, that's just <laughs> reminding them they're normal. Yes, it's yes. so refreshing. And, and um, I, I, like, I like how people, sometimes they post a, a Instagram photo. Oh, I just get up in the morning. I'm drinking a coffee. That's like an hour setup, right? The I right know, light, the right I coffee, know. the right smoke. Oh, Oh, just got kind of like, <laughs> you didn't just get in the morning you've been sitting for one hour that is funny that is really funny right yeah, oh man yeah. all so right we gotta for- we gotta we gotta cancel that photo shoot in the morning for my <laughs> coffee by the way <laughs> but it is, sometimes it's people want to see a different side people want to see different things and and mm-hmm. i don't know somehow when i get like when i dress casual those those videos do very well because i'm always in a suit Right. So, so it oh, stands out. Like right. it says, oh, people like it's like Danny's wearing a, a, a t-shirt. It's, it's, it's like a big thing for them, right? Yeah. It's actually the same thing for me on LinkedIn because I teach video production for yes. LinkedIn pages. So like people always see my videos are like fully edited, always yeah. subtitled. I always have makeup on. There's cuts. You know, if they see a video of me that's like raw, uncut, no makeup, no mm-hmm. subtitles, they're like, they're more likely to watch it. Because they're like, wait a minute. Like I can't What's like, I, yeah. Like what is Shay doing? So I, I agree with what you said. Yeah. Yes. So Shay Four, um, this is awesome. This is so helpful. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. thank you so much. Yeah, and for our listeners, if you want to learn more about LinkedIn, um, how could they engage? Like, do you have any resources for them if they want to learn more about LinkedIn, especially LinkedIn video marketing? Or could they hire you, like myself? Right? Yes. If they're busy, right. what are some of the things that you can help them with? Absolutely. So I always just say for free tips to get started, just follow me. You know, just follow me on LinkedIn. That's LinkedIn.com slash in. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and share it with a friend who would yeah. also find value in the yeah, content. Exactly. Um, but no, it's really true. Like I, I have people reach out to me all the time. They never paid me a dime. And they're like, you've transformed my business just following you. And I'm like, great, you know, great. Cause I have a abundant mindset that I'm like, it'll, it'll all come back. And they're mm -hmm. sharing word of mouth. They're sharing now to other people go follow me. So I really do give a ton of free tips away on my LinkedIn. If you want to dig deeper, however, you can just visit my website, shayrobottom.com. Uh, that's where I lay out all the information around my boot camp, six week LinkedIn video boot camp. Nice. I have tons of recommendations on my LinkedIn about that and various video testimonials from people. Who, who do you think that six week is for? Like if they are business owner, are they professionals? Yeah. Like, um, so it's actually mostly business owners who buy it. Yeah. Funny, funny you ask that because employees have bought it before it with the intention of getting out of their job and wow. i've helped uh, yeah i've helped a lot of people actually leave their job yeah. once they because here's the thing is once they understand the 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 um system of social media content and how it can get you business now they have a tool on their tool belt that's very valuable they didn't have before so yeah. it makes quitting your job to go off in the world of entrepreneurship a lot less scary yeah. so i have actually helped people in that regard but um all different industries. You know, I always say my program is best for um, B2B with a high ticket offer, but it's not necessarily all uh, necessary. I've worked with people in B2C. I've worked with people who are employees. I've worked with people who um, are stay-at-home moms. They just genuinely want to learn about video and social media. So uh, there's really no, no limit, but I will say that for anyone in B2B with a high ticket offer That's who is ideal. Yes. Who is paying? Here's the step further. Who is currently paying to run ads on platforms like Facebook and Instagram, but not doing an organic content strategy on LinkedIn. You're messing up big time because yeah, he's raising his hand. Well, you're going to work with me, Dan. We're going to run your profile. We're going to run your profile. Oh, and that's the other thing on my website. There's more info about the agency services as well. Yes. If you don't want to go through the program, the program is very do it yourself. Uh, it's online. There's group coaching calls. It's like a coaching container kind of thing. But if you just want it done for you, we do offer that as well. So check out the website. And for the agencies of more, more established, busy business owners that they want, they want more hands off approach. They exactly. Want to kind of plug into your system and your team, right? Exactly. Yeah. And ideally someone who already has content, um, I can work with companies in helping them to create content from scratch, It'll but that easier if they already have a lot of content. Exactly. Yeah. People like yourself are really ideal clients I, for I'm me. I'm an easy client, right? Isn't it? You are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, Elena Cardone, Grant's yes. wife started working with me a year ago and she had nothing. She had no profile. Yeah. Now she's about to pass up you. So you better hire me oh, quick because oh, now she's oh. going to pass you. Grant's wife that, is going to pass you up, right bro. There. What right are you going to do? Yeah, that's right. That, right there. That's how you close. That's how you close the deal. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, so if they want to connect you with LinkedIn and I also make sure that post your, all your uh, social media links, all that in the show notes as well. That would be amazing. Yeah. And if you want to just email me directly, that's cool too. Just email Shay at shayrobottom.com subject line LinkedIn and uh, myself or my team will get back to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Shay. Thank you for being on the show. It's been awesome. Awesome. Let's ramp that up. LinkedIn. <laughs> Thanks Dan. Thank you thank for having you. me. Thank you. Appreciate it.